Friends Podcast. Hi, I'm Diane Hunt. I am an impressionist realist painter connecting with nature through my brush. I work in oil paint and watercolor and I live in the countryside of Maryland's eastern shore, not far from the Chesapeake Bay. You can find me online at dianehuntstudio.com and on Facebook and Instagram at Diane Hunt Studio. Hi, I'm Constance Brosson of Steve Brosson's Jewelry Designs. I live in Oklahoma on a prairie, and I make uh, handmade jewelry in silver, copper, and brass. I'm an artist that paints. I paint pastels and in oil sometimes. Hello, this is Clyde J.K.L. I'm the host of this podcast, I am a emerging representational artist. I do historic rend- renderings, seascapes, landscapes, volcanicals, birds, and whatnot. The tight illustrative hand in watercolor, pen and ink, and acrylic paints. And I live in Oklahoma City. Well, hello, this is Clyde J. Gale, and it is January the 27th, another Monday, the last Monday of the month. This is episode 31 of the Artist Friends Podcast. I'm here with Diane and Constance. Hello, Diane. Hi, Clyde. Hi, Constance. Hello, Constance. Hi, Clyde. Hi, Hi, Diane. Hello, everybody. Now, with this episode, we have a guest. Diane brought a friend along. I'm going to let Diane introduce her. Um, I, well, we, uh, we'd like to meet um, Kushlani. I'll let her say her last name because it's a little more of a <laughs> mouthful for me. But um, I met her through another class that I took of artists, and um, we became good friends, and we've gone on trips together and gotten to know each other a little bit better, and um, we've kept in contact since the class ended. It's been a while ago, I guess now. But um, she, she's an abstract artist, and she does wonderful abstracts. Um, one of her last um, series was Upper Garden from the summer. I don't know what she's working on exactly now, but she can fill you in on that herself. So here's Kushlani. <laughs> hi, Diane, and hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for getting me on. Like, Thank you for letting me come on the, the show with you. And of course, Diane, I, uh, I, I was, I'm so privileged to have her as a friend. We shared a room in New York for about how many days was it? Like about I guess three, four days. Three or four. Yeah, and it was like we had a blast there. <laughs> so, and we keep in touch with each other uh, and talk about art. Uh, well, I I am an abstract expressionist. Uh, right now, I'm going through a rough time. So, like right now, what's coming is not pretty ones. They are more black and white, and because I'm going through some of the things that I had pushed aside to to get through life, you know, it's abstract. So for me, abstract expressionism is actually uh, trying to trying it's almost like therapy it's it's like a uh there are times when it's like therapy when it's when there, there are times when i just want to paint the glorious uh world the the things that i feel that's i do a lot of meditation and so like in my meditations i go through a lot of uh, beautiful things but like a lot of beautiful feelings and uh, and I and basic so I just want to 
basically live life fully. Like I want to experience, exactly. I'm sorry? No, no, I said exactly. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, that's, that's, thank you. Um, it's like, I, I feel like I'm, I'm living half of my, like, especially when I'm um, struggling to get through, like, uh, to do things, I kind of like freeze part of my body. And art lets me uh, lose the expression of creating something lets me uh, be more accepting about what I'm like with my whole whole self. So I think what's coming out is like all the things that I've kind of suppressed. And sometimes like it's just the, the pretty things. And like then you go through another another layer and then you're back in uh, like another set of uh, things that you've suppressed and just have to go through that and clear it out. And that I think is helpful for other people too, to see that kind of art because they know like life is not just all beauty. Life is like all of it. So that's what I paint. Okay. And you know, you were able to uh, explain that so well, because a lot of people, especially when it comes to uh, troubling, uh, difficult moments in their life, they have a hard time verbally expressing it. You did such a good job, really. So Thank you. I'm looking forward. To, I hope you're going to, uh, do you have a Facebook uh, account or? Uh, uh, I have like, uh, I have a, uh a LinkedIn right now and I want to okay. uh, I'm, I'm not a fan of Facebook right now. <laughs> I'm, I'm, on, I'm on LinkedIn too now do you post your art on LinkedIn uh, a little bit but I have I still have my Instagram account okay and and you're on Instagram? yeah I have a lot of artwork there but like okay. I think I'm going what's to your get... Instagram thing uh, it's uh, kushlani underscore jaisingha dot uh, I mean that um, at kushlani under uh, underscore Jaya Singha. Okay. We'll get, we'll get Diane. I'm sure Diane has all that information, right? Yeah, Diane. Diane yeah. yeah. <laughs> we'll get Diane to forward that. We too. can type it in the chat later or something yeah, so we can so find we, it. Okay. Uh, let me see. Yeah, sure. Yeah, in a little, in yes, a little bit. Yeah, I know you're get, getting familiar with the technical, for being the first time being on Zoom. <laughs> It can be a little intimidating, you know, learning how to, you know, to do the uh, chat things and whatnot. But uh, we will definitely, uh, Diane, will get that information for you. Do you have a website? I do. Okay. It's uh, kushlanifineart.com. Okay. But what you were talking about, we've we've discussed that many times. Uh, Constance has had some health problems and health issues. And uh, just us meeting, I think, has kind of helped out. At least she says so, right, Constance? Yeah, I mean, it, I moved to Oklahoma about four years ago, and I lost all of my friends when I did that <laughs> because I had friends, you know, in Alabama, and I used to go to a show on Saturdays and sell work every Saturday. So I lost all of those artist contacts, you know, because I moved, and then a place to sell stuff, but really I enjoyed the people as much as I did being able to sell the work, you know, so I really missed seeing the people. So meeting once a week like this really helps you, um, I don't know, stay in touch with other people because I live on a prairie in Oklahoma and it's just, there's nothing. <laughs> well, it's interesting. We, this is great. We know, all the three of us know so much about each other, but I've only met Constance twice in person where she's had a show here in Oklahoma city. Cause she lives uh, mm -hmm. east of me about four hours, I think. Right. Maybe no, it's a, about an hour and a half, two hours at the most, depending on which way you go. And uh, so. Diana, of course is way up in Maryland. I've never met <laughs> Diana person, but I know <laughs> if I, if the three of us ever went out somewhere, they would probably kick us out because we would create such a ruckus. <laughs> <laughs> we have so much fun, don't we? <laughs> Diane, you got any questions you want to you want to ask her? The yeah, the the something that you know about about uh, Christiani that uh, that I'm sorry if I um, missed your name, please. I am horrible with names. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think she did a great job explaining 
um, her paintings and how her feelings are come out on the canvas. And um, a lot of people, I think, have a little bit hard time understanding why artists do abstracts or what what it means, or you know, they can't um, understand. I look at abstract and I said, what? I, I can't figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> I love abstract. It's, uh, uh, it's not something that you actually can figure out, I think. Uh, it's more a visceral experience. Mm -hmm. Something like you connect to it. It's, a, it's like you hear a tune and you, you immediately know you like it or not. Okay. And yeah. you don't, like there's nothing to understand. Yeah, it's like visual, visual music. Yeah, this is like visual music. That's great. Yeah. I like that. That's, yeah, that's it's, a good thing. Because we've, in previous episodes, I, I don't know if you've listened to any of our previous episodes, but uh, we, uh, we've discussed things like that, you know. And we try, we try not to be repetitive, but sometimes when we get in a rut and we end up every other episode talking about the same thing that's what <laughs> nice to have another person you know to because yeah. but the most important thing the purpose of our of these meetings is not so much as to to learn something but just to share mm -hmm. our feelings uh, as artists because like you know diane uh you know she's an oil painter and uh, i used to paint and oils a long long time ago but i live in a very small apartment this is my studio and my apartment mm -hmm. <laughs> if i oil paint i would intoxicate myself <laughs> and i yeah. said well why don't you why don't you use walnut oil paint which uh -huh. i did not even know existed uh -huh. and she got me all excited about that so after <laughs> that podcast after <laughs> that, that meeting i searched online and read all about it and found the manufacturer for it and everything and i ended up for a get a as a black friday so i ended up getting a starter kit of oil paint so sometime when i get ready for it i'm going to start doing oil paint otherwise i use all, a, acrylics and watercolors but that's because of diane you know just us meeting and, and talking about it you know and everything and uh and constance now she has recently been doing a lot of pastels and I think that's going to be the opener. I want to get Constance to talk a little bit about pastels because I'm curious about pastels. And uh, so, so Constance, when the, when you start with the pastels, do you have to use a special paper or is there some kind of unique paper or? There are, there are several different styles of paper. There's like a, I'm probably not saying this, me, me tins paper that has like little holes all in it in a grid sort of that helps hold the pastel onto the paper and that's more an old school paper it comes with two sides you can do the smooth side or the side that has texture on it but now um they have come out with these sanded papers uart and art spectrum has it's kind of like sandpaper exactly like sandpaper except for you know, it's archival safe and it comes in different grits. So if you want to heavily work a, a, a piece with pastels, you want a bigger, a higher grit that, to help hold the different layers that you want to put down. Um, so. Uh, now I've seen, it, I've seen in the stores. Um, okay, the pastels you use is kind of like a chalk right it's it's uh pastel sticks yes pastel sticks. I use the sticks. Okay. i've seen these oil pastels what's the difference is there is the oil pastels like crayon well you can't you can't use that paper if you're going to use oil pastels because i don't know if it's um i haven't really i've done some oil pastels but i've used them on uh just sewed panels and um i like them but I haven't really ever invested in some really nice ones. I've only used, uh, I just had some the little Prag, Prag kit and I used that, but I like the, the soft pastels and hard pastels better. Okay. So, so, so I, uh, yeah, I've ahead. used oil pastels. Do you like, I, I just I, haven't. I've used them. You and, do use uh, them? And 
not on the like I, I actually thought of uh, using them on the sanded paper like the the sand like you know yeah does it work no I've never tried it I actually almost bought them because they come in different colors right mm-hmm yeah and I have this in uh, that, that like they're like lipstick so yeah. Yeah. yeah that's why I they think. Have the same. yeah yeah and they're like the colors are just they're highly pigmented so mm -hmm. the colors are brilliant and I, I used to like them just for that, but uh, but like I kind of I kind of have gone to oils and now to acrylic. You know, it seems if you wanted to do like an underpainting with the oil sticks to get like the sketch or something down, if you were doing that sort of thing, uh -huh. it seems like it would be a really neat thing because you can thin them down with uh, with medium. So I've never done cool. that. <laughs> You got another break. friend, Diane. <laughs> yeah. oh. He broke his way into the. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For our listeners, Diane, the uh, uh, doggy, you know, broke in. Now, in this episode, you heard Mark, and he's uh, you know, knows he would hear her in her talking and hear his voices, and that would start barking. But now he. So, <laughs> that's one know. of them. We had two other ones. <laughs> Have, oh, have three. They got oh, in. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully, she won't break in again. <laughs> <laughs> That's what all the noise was and everything, folks. I don't know if I edited that out. <laughs> that in there. That's that, that was cute. Boy, he jumped right up there. He was <laughs> like, "Hey, how are you doing?" <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, uh, so uh, okay, so the pastels that you use, what you call the soft and the hard stick, and they're uh, they're like a chalk, which is yeah. Kind of like a chalk, except that they're really highly pigmented, you know, not like sidewalk chalk, sidewalk chalk, but these are, they're just really highly, most of them, the really good ones are highly pigmented. So that's but, why you, mm -hmm. you got, during the holidays, she got really excited. This is something the only artist understand, appreciates it. <laughs> she got a gift of pastels of all different colors, and she was holding. Well, no, it's the intent. It wasn't all different colors. It was the intense darks. Yeah. Okay. Uh, one and two that Terry Ludwig put out, and his pastels are like really up there on the scale of really nice pastels, and these are super soft pastels. I mean, you hardly have to put a mark on the page in order to get it to leave a mark and but when you're doing pastels it's sometimes it's hard to get the darks dark enough because i guess of the fillers and binders that you they use in there it doesn't come off of being dark enough so i was doing underpaintings with alcohol inks to get the okay. the dark colors set in before I started doing the pastel painting itself. But now I have, you know, I still do the underpaintings a lot, but I still, uh, I like the, they're do really start on, um Do you start on colored papers, different colors? Some, yeah, sometimes they're color paper, but generally if I'm gonna do an underpainting, I will use, like the UART comes in kind of what looks like sandpaper it comes in that kind of brown color and uh and they also have they just came out with a black black is nice also um because then the colors just pop right off the page you know but um yeah, uh, either. I, I have seen uh some colored colored uh sandpapery papers mm -hmm. all kind now uh where art spectrum puts those out yeah have you tried like if you uh you might be able to find them online yeah i've got <clears throat> very yeah. pretty colors oh there you go yeah okay yeah so it, this particular pack comes with the cool colors and then they have one that comes with uh, yeah. uh -huh. warm colors and these are these are great if you don't want to do an underpainting or you can still do an underpainting on some of these that are lighter and I like to do underpainting sometimes, but then there's other times where I like to use just, because some of these are actually really cool looking colors, you know, the different colors. Mm, yeah. uh, I love this this one and this one, these mm -hmm. two right here. Yeah. Um, but, and then they all, Art Spectrum also makes um, a primer that has sand, sanded texture in it. And you can do your so you need that texture. you want to. 
you need that technique to grab to grab the uh the, the it helps to have that that sand sanded texture okay to grab the pigments off of the when it's you know. when a piece is done do you spray it with any kind of a sealer or varnish or you know i used to but now i've gotten where i don't um uh, you can frame them so that there's a spacer in between the painting itself and the first mat so that when it, the pig the stuff falls it will go down behind the mat instead of on the mat okay and also, I've gotten a new product. Let me go over here. I got a new product, and in, in it's um, so that I don't have to use a mat. I can just frame it like an oil painting, but with glass. And there are little spacers that go under on the glass, and then you put the painting on. And then you can frame it without. Here, let me show you. The no, 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 no. There you go. Remember, this is a recording. Don't get up and walk away. She does that frequently. <laughs> I have it sitting here so you can see it. <laughs> <laughs> it for Constance. Okay, now I, I edit these podcasts, but we've been getting so good that I've had to do very little editing. But whenever I Constance gets up and walks away, remember Diane in the first what the first two or three episodes? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> for oh, let me show that to you. <laughs> yeah. and then she's talking and you can barely hear her you know and then she comes back. <laughs> or she's got something in her drawer or her desk that she's fiddling around and you get a little ticking noises you know and everything <laughs> Yeah, she she also does she also does jewelry, so she usually has a lot of bracelets and stuff on. Yeah, I took them off tonight so they wouldn't rattle. <laughs> I had a pair of uh, eyeglasses chains. I made a series of eyeglass chains. Oh, yeah, I remember that. And I was wearing one of those for a while, and it just rattle, 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 rattle until we figured out I had to take that off too. <laughs> Because this is, I don't have a professional studio here. I do have a very professional mic, and that's about all that, you know, seems to make me sound good. But uh, outside sounds, like, like remember one episode we had, you kept hearing the sound, my, it was my yeah. first that kept kicking on yeah, when it was cold. <laughs> and, boy, that was hard to edit that episode. <laughs> Chris, uh, yeah. What kind of medium you you say you use acrylic when you create your art or you draw? Right now, yes, I'm into acrylic now. I do uh, some oils too because I wanted to. You know, I've I've used um, like uh, you know software. It's called cold wax. It's like oh yeah, uh, oh that stuff's cool. <laughs> yeah, it is cool, and uh, because you can kind of make good textures and like you can embed things on on the canvas. Okay. But like the, you know, I've been off of oils for so long. Just the the smells didn't agree with me. Yeah, yeah they are. They can be toxic. And that's that's why. And I and I use walnut oil and orange oil for as solvents. It still is like the oil paint. Uh, has the oil paint itself is has that smell. Well, the uh, what what Diane uses and what I'm going to start using is the from the M Graham company. Uh, they make uh, the oil paint with walnut oil in the paint. That's that's. Oh wow, that is so nice. Yes, that's a medium. Yeah. There is no smell because that's the first thing I did when I got my set. <laughs> I opened it up, you know, the, and there is no smell whatsoever. You, you, I would love to. Which one is this? M Graham. Yeah. M Graham. Yeah, the M Graham Company. And okay, I I would like to. If you go if you go to Google and you just search for walnut oil paint, uh -huh. that, that that their website will. Oh, come. I see. Okay. Now they're expensive. Whoa, really expensive, but mm -hmm. it's it's worth the uh, you know not having to put up with the solvent because you can use. I was reading on you can use the 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 the, the, the walnut oil as a cleaner to clean your brushes. And of course, if you're going to store your brushes for a while, then you you know use a a uh, solvent to uh, store them. But just in between paintings, the walnut oil will clean will clean the brush out. And then you use what's called a walnut alkyd. Did I say it right, Diane? Or alkyd. The alkyd. Yeah. Walnut walnut 
uh, Alkid, and that uh, you can use that for like a thinner to you know like what you would normally use turpentine. You know, in this case, mm -hmm. you're using yeah. using that instead, and it's really I haven't done it yet, used them yet, <laughs> but I'm excited and everything, and that's what uh, you know Diane does. She told me all the cost. The cost they're not um, terribly expensive. I mean, they're they're comparable to other high quality paints as far as the costs go. Yeah, um, I'll have to slowly. They're not, they're not terribly expensive. Those. I I've used a uh, uh, I've used orange oil that you can get in a gallon, and just to wash the brushes. But some people just dislike the orange oil completely because it smells like orange. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Mix with the oil oil paints, and then it just becomes a little different smell. So, but it's if you use it and throw it away, that's that's good. But with the walnut oil, though, it's uh, and it doesn't smell. I mean, I you know I haven't uh, I right away that's the first thing you know because Diane told me, and so I didn't trust her. I had to open them up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, well, you must have trusted her enough. You bought them. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, because I got, like I said, I got a starter set, you know, it's uh, six tubes, just basic colors with a small bottle, bottle of uh, walnut oil and a small bo bottle of al uh, walnut alkyde. And uh, it was like, uh, it was a Black Friday deal, uh, 50 bucks, $50. When normally it's, it was, that's not bad. It, it was going for 75 or $80. So, you know, I, I was, I was happy. It was, uh, so I just haven't got brave enough to to start using them. Yet, you know? <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining us, and I'm going to mess your name up again, Krishlan. Say your yeah. Krishlani. Krishlani, did I say yeah. it right? <laughs> I, I, am so, I, I I really apologize. Please don't That's take. Okay. It. I, I, I hope you come back and join us. Thank you so much for joining Thank us. Thank you. It's time. been a pleasure being with you. And uh, this is episode 31 for January the 27th, the Artist Friends podcast. And I've been here with my artist friends and my new artist friend, Krishani, and with Diane and Constance. Good night, Diane. Good night, Constance. Good night. Good night, you guys. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Good night, Krishani. Good night. The Artist Friends Podcast is produced and edited by Clyde J. Kale. Participating artists, Diane Hunt and Constance Bronson and Kushlani J. Sinha and Clyde J. Kale. You can find more information about Diane Hunt, www.dianehuntstudio.com, Constance Bronson, www etsy.com forward slash shop forward slash c-b-r-o-s-n-a-n-s Kuslami Jasenha www.k-u-s-h-l-a-n-i fineart.com Clyde J. Kale www.cjkale.com artworks.com If you would like to participate or appear as a guest on the Artist Friends Podcast, please email cjkale at sign mystery hyphen otr dot com This podcast is issued under the Creative Commons License.